Good morning, good morning. Somebody give God a shout of praise this morning, for this is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Just give him a thunder of applause this morning. I don't care if you're sitting in, up in the bed, if you're on the couch, on the patio, wherever you are this morning. Just give God a shout of praise. Hallelujah. He's worthy of it. He's worthy. If you are listening to, the, if you are hearing the sound of my voice, if you are watching me on Facebook live this morning, you have something to rejoice about. So lift up your hands, throw back your head, and lift up your voice, and give your God a praise on this morning. Hallelujah! You're worthy, Father. You're worthy of all the adoration, of all the glory. You are God all by yourself. Come on, just get it out of you. I know you got a praise in your belly this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Uh, as the generation before us said, you, you woke me up and started me on my way, clothed in my right mind, activity of my limbs. If you ain't got nothing else to thank him for this morning, just thank God for being God. Hallelujah. My God, I know I got about three, four, five peoples out there on Facebook this morning, and, and you understand where I'm coming from. You feel me this morning, just hallelujah. My God, my God, my God. Amen. I greet you in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, this morning. I pray that everyone at the sound of my voice is healthy and happy on this morning. Amen. Amen. Let's go into the word. Let me say this. I, I, I don't have. I don't have a long message. But I have a question for you this morning, a, a simple question. I'm, I'm going to pose a simple question. And, and if you give me about 15 minutes, you'll see where I'm going with it. Amen. I want to ask the question this morning. How's your love life? Did pastor just ask, how's my, and I, my question is, how's your love life? I didn't ask you how your sex life is. I'm not caring about your sex life. That's, matter of fact, if you ain't married, you shouldn't have a sex life, but that's a different story. How is your love life? And, and I, I know some of you are pondering, well, me and my husband, I kind of like him at times. That's, no. Let's go into the word this morning. Amen. Are y'all with me this morning? Amen. Go with me to Matthew chapter 22, verses 36 through 40. Amen. Wherever you are, stand if you can. If you land in bed, just lift up one foot, however you want to do it this morning, but give God the glory. Amen. Matthew 22, verses 36 through 40 reads as follow, and I'm reading from the King James Version. Excuse me for one minute. Good morning, Discipleship Ministries. Good morning, DMI. How are y'all doing this morning? Hey, Amen. I, 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 am, I, I am so, what's the phrase that I'm looking for here? Y'all have to excuse me. I, I know protocol. I know procedure and all of that when it comes down to church. I'm just not good at it. I forget to give accolades. I forget to do all the preliminaries. I get ready to go to the word. That's what excites me, the word of God. Amen? Amen. But to everyone out there, it, five-fold ministry, DMI, visitors, guests, all of you, welcome. Amen? Amen. Matthew 22, 36 through 40, and it reads, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Father God, we thank you for your word. Father, I thank you that you are concerned about every little dot and tittle that we carry. Father, you are concerned about everything about us. Thank you that you're concerned about our love life, Father. And we give you glory and honor 
In Jesus' name, amen, amen. How is your love life? You, you, you kind of see where I'm going with this. I, I, I didn't ask about your sex life. I asked about your love life. Because here's the thing. Love is God and God is love. And how can we say that we are Christians, we, we are followers of Christ, if we can't love one another? Oh, I just stepped on some of the saints toes right there, Lady Saborio. I stepped on. Because for some reason, we think some of us, a small fragment of us think that being a Christian means I can do and say what I want to do and hide behind the Bible when I do it. Well, I just had to tell them off. I just had to give them a piece of my mind because the word of God. But did you do it in love? Because if you didn't do it in love, you hurt somebody and you didn't help them. My God, my God, my God. But look here. Here we are in Matthew chapter 22. And, and, and the Pharisees are trying to cross Jesus up. And, and they began to, to throw out a series of questions and scenarios to our Savior and, 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 and Jesus so full of wisdom and understanding and discernment to discern that what they were trying to do. He, he answers the question so profound. Go back and read chapter 22 this week. That's your homework assignment for the week. But they say, Master. Now, now this is a Pharisee talking to him. And he says, Master, as in teacher. He's been a little bit sarcastic. He says, which is the great commandment? Uh, in the law. They, they're trying to catch him up. They're trying to find him guilty of blasphemy of the word of God, which will end with stoning him to death. You, you, yeah, you got to be careful when people start asking you questions. Even when I ask you the question, how's your love life? Some people tighten up real quick. But be, let, let's go further. He says, which is the great commandment in the law? And Jesus said unto him, thou shall love. See, you could put a pin in it right there. Thou shalt love. Pin it. How's your love life? How's your love life, people of God? We're about five months, five, six months into the pandemic, and a lot of people aren't able to go to church and Things are beginning to change within each of us. If you're not filling yourself with the word. And follow with me for a second here. I, I, I did a message a few weeks back. And I said that the real you will start to come up. That old you. That you that you're familiar with. He, he'll start to raise up, rise up, raise up. He'll get up. He'll start to come back up. Because human nature is human nature, people of God. Listen to me. No matter how saved, how sanctified you are, human nature will try to raise up. Remember, there's a war between the flesh and the spirit. So right about now, five months in, if you haven't been feeding your spirit, your flesh is acting up. And guess what? You're not loving the way you're used to. See, see be honest, when, when people come into church, they the love of God will overwhelm you. And, and, and even when you're trying to be ugly, even if you don't want to speak to your sister or your brother, even when you just want to be nasty, the love of God will circumference you. It will penetrate you. It will take over. And, and the very person that you got out of the car talking about, the very person that you said, I'm not even going to speak to her this morning. She better not run up in my face. It's going to be a fight in the church. The love of God will, will take over and you will see that person and wrap your arms around them. You, you get what I'm saying at this morning? How's your love life? Right about now, is everything going on making you angry? Everybody that called your phone, are, are, are they irritating you? How's your love life? He says, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind. I, I believe, Lady Saporia, Mr. List, I believe we as Christians got that part down. We got loving God down real good. Because we're quick to say, in him I live, move, and have my being. We, we got the loving God part down. Our, our, our minds are stayed on him. Our hearts are committed to him. We, we vowed our flesh unto him. God, I submit myself unto you. But what about part two? Look at what he says. 
He said, this is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. I don't know about anybody else in this world, but Pastor Rogers loves himself. He really does. Even when he eating Krispy Kreme donuts. By the way, I went to Krispy Kreme this morning. Even when he's eating Krispy Kreme donuts and know that he should not be, he still loves him. Mr. Lister had to stand up on that one, y'all. <laughs> but he said, love your neighbor as you love yourself. See, when I was coming up in school, they, they, they gave us a golden rule. They taught us the golden rule. Do unto others as you would have them to do unto you. How's your love life right now? How's your love life? Is everybody in the house getting on your last nerve? There may be a reason why. You getting up in the morning, going to this job, these folks are aggravating you to death. You can't wait to get out of there. How's your love life? Soon as you get home, here comes the husband. Here comes the wife. Here come the kids. All of this going on. Everybody driving you crazy. How's your love life? Are you loving the way God has instructed, the way God has commanded us to love? Look, go back to the text here. He said, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. He wasn't talking about in your hood. He wasn't just talking about your community. He was talking about the human race. He was talking about your neighbor, your brother, your sister, whether they look like you or not. How's your love life? What are you talking about, Pastor Rogers? What I'm saying is, if you are not putting that word in you right about now, if you're not being filled with the word of God, guess what? You're being filled with something else because something has got to occupy your space. Catch that, people of God. If you're not putting, oh my God. If you're not putting the word in you, and I know you guys are probably getting, DMI, y'all probably getting tired of hearing me say this, but I want to make sure that every sheep is being fed. That is my responsibility. That is my assignment to make sure you get fed. He told Peter, he said, do you love me? Feed my sheep. We, we've already established that we love. The loving God part is there. So I got to do my assignment. My assignment is to make sure you get the word of God. Because right about now, I'm seeing attitudes flare up. I'm seeing husbands and wife go against each other. I'm seeing parents ready to kick overgrown kids out of the house. Why? Because the love ain't the same. My God. Understand something, people of God. Love is one of the fruit of the spirit. As a Christian, that should be a natural thing for us. I, I know, I know, I know, I know. I heard you. It don't come that easy. I hear you. Some of us have been taught not to love, to put up our defenses, to shield yourself. Don't let anybody behind your wall. But if you're going to be a Christian, if you're going to be a disciple of Jesus Christ, you got to tear your wall down, brother. You got to knock that wall down. I don't care if you got to get a screwdriver and a hammer and, hammer and chisel it down. You got it. How's your love life? How's your love life? See, where there's not love, hate will come in. Envy, jealousy, strife, malice. Fill your heart with love, mind, body, and soul. My God. Now, now, now here they are. They're, they're trying to trap him. They're trying to catch him. In, 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 in some, they, they, they want him to say something so that they can accuse him of blasphemy. But he says, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Not the house next to you. Not the house across the street that where you borrow sugar. Who is my neighbor? Let, I'm glad you asked that. Now, now, now understand something. Go to Matthew chapter 12, 46 through 50. I want to read this real quick. It says, while he yet talked to the people, behold, his mother and his brethren stood without, desiring to speak with him. Then one said unto him, behold, thy mother and thy brethren stand without desiring to speak with thee but he answered and said let me read that all over 
While he yet talked to the people, behold, his mother and his brethren stood without desiring to speak with him. Then one said unto him, Behold, thy mother and thy brethren stand without desiring to speak with thee. But he answered and said unto him that told him, Who is my mother? Who are my brethren? And he stretched forth his hand toward his disciples and said, Behold, my mother and my brethren. For whosoever shall do the will of my Father which is in heaven, the same is my brother and sister and mother. This is your neighbor right there. Any member of the body of Christ, any member of the human race, that's who our neighbors are. This is who we're supposed to. They don't have to look like you. They don't have to talk like you. They don't have to come from where you came from. They may not smell like you. But as a follower of Christ, we have a responsibility to love them. I, I know, I know. It's hard to love some people. It may have been hard to love you, but somebody did. How's your love life? How's your love life? Are, are, are you giving enough love? Or maybe I need to ask the question, are you getting enough love? Because sometimes we don't get enough, and that causes us not to give enough. Can I tell you a secret before I close? If you want to know how to love, if you want to learn how to love, if you want to see your wall come down so that you can love, I'm about to tell you the key to it. The word of God. For God so loved the world. Did, did I not hit the nail on the head right there? For God so loved. This book is full of love. God's love. Unconditional love. And all you got to do is read it. All you got to do is meditate on it. All you got to do is eat the whole scroll. Watch your love life change. See, people go to... People go to seminars about sex and love making. People read books about it and, and, and all these things. What does your heart look like, though? If you don't have love in your heart, nobody's going to be able to teach you how to love. If you don't have love in your heart, where is it going to go? Do you get what I'm saying this morning, people of God? I pose the question, how's your love life? Because if your love life is a little bit shaky, you need to download some love. Here it is, right here. Holy Bible, the word of God. Jesus. Let every man love his brother as God loves us. Without prejudice, without judgment, with, without deceit. Care for your brother as God cares for you. Pray for your brother as God has commanded you to do. Plain and simple Sunday message. How's your love life? This week is a wonderful time to work on it. This week is a wonderful time to perfect. This week is a wonderful time to rebuild. Take some time. Do a self-evaluation. You may have to get on the phone and call a couple of people and, and apologize, repent. I haven't loved you the way that I should. I haven't shown you love according to the word of God. I haven't treated you with love the way the Father has treated me with love. Don't be so prideful. Let your love show. You were created from love, in love, to love. Get busy, people of God. Father God, I, I lift you up. I magnify your holy name. I thank you for your word, Father. I thank you. I thank you that you do not allow us to continue in self. Even as we began to, to detour from the path that you had laid out, have laid out for us, Father. 
even as we detour, you have a way of bringing us right back. Father, let your love abide in us. Allow us to, to love other, help us to love other people the way you love us. Father, we walk in the spirit and not in the flesh. We don't want to fall short of anything. We don't want to fall short of anything that you've put before us, Father. We will be guilty of loving our brother. We will be guilty of loving our neighbor. Father, we will be guilty of loving a stranger. For we are created in your image and in your likeness. Thank you, Father. Thank you for your love. And Father, I bless your holy name. I ask that you would just cover your people. Everyone at the sound of my voice, Father God. Let your love rest, rule, and abide. And we give you the praises and the honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Be blessed, people of God. Have a wonderful Sunday afternoon. Amen.